What's going on YouTube? I've had a lot of questions about uh, the handlebar setup on this bike. It's a 2022 Lowrider S, and I wanna go over with you guys real quickly uh, how we set this bike up, the parts you're gonna need, and uh, some specifics there. It's a little bit different than the 2020 and 2021, which uh, means you're gonna need different parts and a, a different way to build it. So uh, let's just hop into it and hopefully answer some questions about uh, how you're gonna be able to get this part done. All right. All right guys, so the bars on this bike are a Big Al riser with essentially like a generic mid-bend bar on top. Uh, total rise is about 14 inches. It's a 10 and a half inch, or excuse me, 10 inch riser with a pullback to it. So you can see it kind of kicks back at the top, makes it a little bit more comfortable. Um, but real quickly, there's gonna be quite a few things that you need to do a uh, bar job on these bikes. Pretty much for any height that you want to go um, because the stock bars are so low. So the first thing that you'll need is a clutch cable. And the one cool thing about the new soft tails is that it's a two-piece two clutch cable. So under here, which is where the uh, quote-unquote adjuster is, uh, you can actually disconnect the top half of the cable from the bottom half. So you go to Harley and you ask them, hey, I need an extended clutch cable for a soft tail. Uh, 2022 soft tail and they will just give you the top half and it's pretty easy to disconnect it's just a, a tab the next couple things that you'll need are your um, speedo extension no matter what kind of speedo you go if you use the OEM one or if you go digital you'll need this cable then you'll need your left and right turn signals your throttle by wire extension as well as your CAN bus wires extension I uh, don't have part numbers for you, but if you go into any Harley dealer, they'll know what you're talking about. Sometimes these are hard to get. They can be on back order. And then the most important thing that you'll need is this brake line. <clears throat> so I got this brake line set up by uh, a parts guy over at High Desert Harley Davidson, and um, which is in Meridian, Idaho. Uh, they have done this for a few bikes already and you're gonna to have to do this if uh, you have a 2022. The reason being is there aren't brake line kits out quite yet for the 2020, 20, excuse me, 2022s because they do not have ABS. So if we take a look down here, the way you can tell you don't have ABS is that your junction, your brake junction only has three lines coming off of it. One to each caliper and one to the master cylinder. So if that's what your junction looks like, then you do not have ABS and you have to build a kit. It's a little bit of extra leg work to get it done, but um, worth doing. It's definitely a game changer for the bike and you'll have to do it if you wanna do a T-bar setup on your Lowrider S. So a typical kit is gonna come with banjo on top. I believe it's a 12 millimeter down to a single brake line. You have to measure for the height of your bars Goes all the way down. Let's see if I can turn the bars here for you. <clears throat> Into another banjo of sorts. It's a, a male to male 45 degree that goes into your junction block right here, which you will also have to buy. And then you have another 45 degree coming out one side into a brake line all the way down. And then you have another banjo that goes into your caliper, okay? And I'll show you the same thing on the other side. Let's see if we can turn her. Okay. So 45 degree, brake line all the way down, banjo. So in total, you'll need two banjos, one for each caliper. You will need three 45 degree fit fittings that come off of your brake junction, which is this part. You'll need the brake junction. And then you'll need another brake line that comes up into another banjo. So a total of three banjos, three brake lines, and three, oh, three 45 degree fittings that come off of your um, brake junction. So quite a few things there. Um, again, it's the, the specific length that you will need depends on the height of your bar and risers but uh, you have to measure that yourself. It's not one size fits all. Okay, so there's one last thing that we should cover from this angle about how you need, what parts you need to get for your bars. And it's kind of a sneaky one. So 
the original bezel or gauge housing that houses your speedometer, odometer, tachometer, all that stuff, um, comes in a housing where the mounting bolts on each side are slightly offset. They're slightly wider than any other Harley made. Why did they do that? I have no idea. But you have to go out and get another gauge housing. So what uh, we did for this bike was we went to Big Al's, Big Al Cycles. It's the same brand as the Riser. And they sell a kit that comes with a couple of spacers in here, the silver, so you can have the uh, gauge housing stand up a little bit above the riser and it's pointed straight at you while you're riding so you can see your speed and your all your you know information you need to see. Uh, that works really, really well. But you do need to get this um, gauge housing. The one that comes OEM on the 2022 will not fit any top clamp other than the one that comes OEM on the bike. And you might ask, okay, well, why don't I just use the top clamp that comes OEM on the bike and then, you know, new risers? Well, the reason being is because these top two bolts are then going to be spread out. It's honestly about like an eighth of an inch and you won't be able to use that top clamp with any riser either. It's a really weird spacing issue. I'm not really sure why Harley did that, but it makes you have to buy um, a gauge housing like this one. The other thing that I've seen done uh, not as frequently, but you can actually get the Street Bob Speedo, which is a little digital thing that sits essentially in the top clamp. Uh, if you've ever seen a modern soft tail Street Bob, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's a little tiny screen about that big that reads off your information, and you can convert the bike to having that kind of a uh, speedometer, odometer, tachometer, etc. Um, we liked the look of this one. I think it reads data better than the Street Bob one does. You can see it better when the sun's on it and things. The Street Bob one, I've had it. Uh, depending on the light and things, it's actually a little bit harder to read. So we elected to stick with this gauge. Um, it's my personal preference. It's also uh, the owner of this bike's personal preference to do it that way. But that is an option. You can convert it to the Street Bob gauge. All right. Do a quick size reference for you guys. I am about six foot one. Again, 10 and a half inch pullback riser with a mid bend bar that probably has three or four inches of rise to it. So I'd say it's probably a 13 or 14 inch total rise with the pullback. As you can see, my hands are a little bit under my shoulders as far as height goes. My arms are bent. Gives me really good control over the motorcycle, a really comfortable seating position too. So I'm seating, sitting really comfortably, feet on the pegs, my uh, back is firmly into the seat, and I can cruise like this. It's not like the old bars where they have them down here and it's more of a drag setup. Okay, so most of the reason why you do this is for comfort. I'm just showing you for a six foot one person. This is about the height that you want, which is 13 to 14 inches with a pullback. Um, you can go higher than this, but then your arms are gonna be above your shoulders. You could go lower, but then your whole body is gonna be moved forward. This is a really perfect and comfortable uh, position for me. And if you're around my size, it'll be perfect for you too. All right, guys, well, that's gonna do it for this video. It's not an in-depth install video. There's plenty of videos on YouTube about how to install these bars. It's, uh, you know, pull your cables through the bars and make sure you wire everything up and, you know, Bob's your uncle. But there's a couple little uh, tricks that you need to know when you do it on a 2022 Lowrider S and more than likely on an ST as well. Um, yeah, that's about it. It's a really, really clean look if you want to put T-bars on your... Lowrider S, it's the way to go. Really great performance, looks good, comfortable. It's the way to go. But anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found any information helpful, give me a uh, like if you don't mind and maybe even a subscribe would be nice.